Hello comrades and welcome back to another episode of Ashanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. My name is Sergei and I was born in the USSR. Меня зовут Сергей, и я родился в Советском Союзе. So today we return to the topic of retirement and pensions in the Soviet Union and I would like to thank one more time Michael Rasmussen for his a message because it's inspired me to make this video. So we're going to talk one more time about millions of pensioners in the Soviet Union. And just a quick comment on this, uh, Michael's comment, uh, there's a part that says uh, every former Soviet state was gutted under capitalism. These uh, comments, uh, statements really crack me up because it almost sounds like a capitalism came and occupied former Soviet Union and started gutting all the social systems. Think about who were the people in power who did all that. Those were former communists in Ukraine, in Belarus, in Russia, all those republics, former communists stayed in power. I mean, you can Google yourself, Yeltsin, Kravchuk, Nazarbayev, all those guys who became presidents of Russia, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, they're all former communists. So you can say that former Soviet states were gutted by former communists. Okay. I got that out of my system, so now let's talk again about uh, retirement in the Soviet Union. And this cute poster was the happy uh, old guy holding Pravda newspaper. I should uh, say a couple things about it. So he's, as I said, looking at the Pravda, which is the was the main newspaper of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. And uh, it says, Zakon o государственных пенсиях. So he's reading the law about state pensions. And the message says, Мы спокойны за свой завтрашний день. We are uh, calm, like we are, feel safe about our tomorrow. So that's what this poster says. So uh, the law about state pensions. So let's talk about that. So this law dates back to July 14, 1956. So think about it. Soviet Union was created in 1922. Only 34 years later, they finally come up with the law that created the system of for old people to get retirement. And another interesting, it's the year, think about it, 1956. What happened just three years prior? And if you answer that on March 5th, 1953, Comrade Stalin died, you're correct. So only after the death of Stalin, Soviet government uh, figure out, hey, we need to take care of our old people. Before that, there was no system, like no setup age, no uh, state funds to pay pensions to Soviet citizens. And that's my beef with Comrade Stalin. He never treated Soviet people as humans. He always treated them as material. You know, we lost over 40 million people in World War II. Not a big deal, women will pop more babies. We never had anything for uh, Soviet people retirement. Not a big deal. It's only after his death, suddenly Soviet government like, oh, we need to take care of our old people. Let's make a law. Now, if you want me to get into details of this law, I can make a separate long and super boring video. But today we're just going to look at some highlights. First of all, uh, this law set up the age of retirement. So for workers and so the, for blue collar and white collar workers, men, get retired at the age of 60, but they need to work at least for 25 years. Women could retire at the age of 55, and they needed to work at least 20 years. And there were additional people who work like, you know, coal mines and other like a bed for your health uh, places. Uh, men could retire at age of 50, and women could retire at age of 45. An interesting detail, Law of 1956 never mentioned collective farm workers. So uh, villagers couldn't retire according to this law. There was another law about uh, that 11 years, nine years later in 1965 that they finally mentioned collective farm workers. According to 1956 law, there was no retirement for them. And I believe the government logic was, well, we let the peasants, the villagers, uh, to cultivate 0 0.4 uh, hectare of land. They grow crops there so they can feed themselves. Uh, so we don't need to pay them uh, 
any retirement money, any pension. And technically, Collective Farm was responsible to pay pensions, but of course, since Collective Farm uh, itself uh, barely stayed afloat due to low wholesale prices uh, that were paid by the government, they hardly had any money to pay workers, current Collective Farm workers, and of course they had uh, really nothing to offer to their retirees. But let's talk about people in the cities. So the minimal pension in the cities were set at 35 rubles. So my grandma was getting 12. In the city, it was pretty much close to triple that, right? 35 rubles. So that's a huge jump. But of course, my grandparents, they had their own house, log cabin. If you live in a city, uh, you had uh, so-called free housing. So you have to pay... Um, rent which was cheap maybe seven rubles a month but if you make only 35 to pay seven rubles that's uh, close to what 20 uh, percent um, of your pension so that's quite a bit of money it's not as cheap if you just have a pension as the income and you didn't save any money so as i mentioned the minimum pension in the city was uh, 35 rubles and the maximum pension was set at 120 rubles now we talked about Nikita Khrushchev he had so-called personal personal pension that one was just set by the government official so depending how important you were in the government they will let you have regardless the law but otherwise law was set max pension at 120 rubles per month and if you remember in my previous video, I mentioned that one of the way, there was two ways to calculate your pension. One was to look at two last years prior retirement. And then you take that average salary and your time is at 0 0.55. So basically divided by two. So in order to get 120 rubles maximum pension, you had to make 220 rubles per month. That's a lot of money. Uh, like my father was working as a spray painter and you know that's a not a good job for health he was around 180 to 200 rubles per month so he was pushing there so you have to make a lot of money uh, to get your max uh, pension of 120. there was a second option to calculate your pension and i believe that's what my mom was trying to get because she was trying to explain me and i couldn't understand but once i read the law i figured out so other option you pick any five-year period of your working career it must be non-stop period so that's when you worked without stopping so basically they let you pick five year of your work and find the one that you had your highest earnings and then you take average from those five years and then same formula times 0 0.55 and that's what my mom was saying that her highest earnings were around 19 85 86 87 so and that's when she had my brother so she lost that option for the max uh, pension for her because she had to take decretny otpusk she uh, took a vacation because she was pregnant to take you know to give a birth and then to take care of the baby so her five year was messed up by uh, living work i mean she was still getting paid but it doesn't count in your uh, pain, uh, in your pension. And that's why she couldn't get the best possible pension for her uh, pay because of her pregnancy in 1986. You also could get additional 10% bonus if uh, you worked as a man for 35 years nonstop or for 30 years for women. Uh, it will get you 10%. So if you want of those lucky ones who get maximum pension of 120 rubles per month and you worked for 35 years at one place and non-stop will say that then additional 10 percent will push you to 132 rubles for the regular worker who worked you know the top pay level for the soviet person his maximum pension could be 132 rubles per month but what i found out that it looks like in the cities average uh, pension was around 70 rubles per month still quite a bit more than like my grandmother was getting only 12. 
But then, of course, we can talk about military uh, personnel like officers and their pensions were pushing 200 rubles a month. So like police, militia and former officers, uh, they were getting 200 rubles and more. So remember in my last video, I made this comparison looking at the minimal pension of the collective farm worker and compare it with the Nikita Khrushchev, the highest pension in the Soviet Union, and then did the same comparison for um, lowest social security payment and Jimmy Carter uh, pension in the United States. Now it's time to make a similar comparison, but for the maximum pension in the Soviet Union and maximum social security payment in the United States. Okay, so here we go, United States. The maximum social security payment right now is $3,895 per month. And Jimmy Carter, I'm just using, it's his current payment. So he's getting $18,500 per month. Of course, let's forget about taxes right now. Just keep it as simple as possible. So the difference is 4.75 times. So almost five times that's what uh, former president of the United States get versus the highest paid um, receiver of the social security uh, system. So $4,000 pretty much for social security max payment versus $18,500 for former president of the United States. Okay, so the difference in the United States is 4.75 times, so almost five times. Now, Soviet Union maximum pension, 132 rubles, and highest pension, Nikita Khrushchev, 500 rubles. The difference is 3.79 times, so almost four times. So here we got pretty close. It actually, the United States is a little bit ahead, a little bit more, uh, not discrepancy, but disparity maybe. Uh, so here we are pretty much on the same page. The difference between the highest paid uh, pensions or social security payments versus former president's leaders uh, payment only about four to five times. So now we are pretty close. So this is quite interesting. So on the, uh, for the poorest people in the Soviet Union, the wealth gap was humongous and even bigger than the similar gap in the United States. For the highest compensated retirees, gap is pretty much almost the same even a little bit less than the United States. So quite an interesting uh, situation here in the country which is supposed to be uh, fighting for equality among the people that everyone should get about the same compensation across the board. But in fact, the compensation were quite uh, drastically different. And I had several viewers commented that what about, you know, uh, Coca-Cola CEO compensation and his uh, retirement package or some other huge companies but that's private sector. We cannot compare, in this case, apples to apples because the Soviet Union didn't really have private sector. So that's why I just took government uh, pension program in the Soviet Union and a government social security program in the United States. Then you kind of can't compare. And as I said, results were surprising to myself. I never thought that actually Soviet Union will have a more um, disparity uh, in the bottom and the top le level of payments uh, comparing with the United States. But to be fair, uh, I need to tell you that I actually met some people uh, in our village that were well-to-do uh, retirees, well-to-do pensioneri, but uh, this uh, grandpa of my friend, Igor, he was a former uh, NKVD KGB officer. I wish I was more curious and ask him he was telling some stories. He was doing some uh, work on the Soviet-Iranian border, like they were crossing the border and doing some stuff. Uh, so he retired super early, I think like being 40 years old. Uh, and his pension was really high. Uh, and his wife was former teacher. So they were actually well-to-do um, pensioneri. I don't know what was their pension, but they even didn't bother to have a cow. That was the only family that I knew in the village that he figured out it's not worth it for him to bother to have his own cow, just too much work. He could afford to buy milk from the neighbors. My grandparents couldn't afford to buy milk. They didn't have enough money um, and not enough income. But this guy, he had a, 
and like Ural motorcycle, you know, with a sidecar. He has a actual motorboat. Other people just had regular, you know, boats that you have to paddle. He had the one with the motor. So that was a well-to-do family uh, comparing with other people around them just because he was former NKVD retiree uh, officer and she was a teacher. But generally, old people in Soviet Union were poor. And I'm saying it, one of the reasons maybe because like I never seen an old person driving a car. That's one of the shocks that I experienced when I came to America for the very first time in 1995 is uh, I saw old wrinkled ladies driving this huge beautiful Buicks and Cadillacs and that scene was just hurting my eyes because it was so weird. Like our old people usually they, they sit on the bench by their house and just um, you know eating sunflower seeds and here you see this huge beautiful car and at first look it looks like car drives by itself because you don't see a driver because this tiny lady is so tiny you don't see her behind the steering wheel but then it's like oh my goodness old people in america drive these beautiful cars like young people drive crappy rusty cars and old people have nice new cars that was totally opposite what was happening in Ukraine in early 90s that uh, you know young people were becoming rich and poor people were becoming more even more poor so to see the old person behind the wheel of the nice car was uh, quite a shock for me well my friends that's all I have for you today i hope you learned something new i learned uh, quite a bit new information just because i started asking questions to myself hey what about we compare you know apples to apples here and uh, this all math was total surprise to me so i hope you guys learned something new as well thank you so much for watching Oshanka show don't forget to like this video uh, place your comments uh, share with your friends and we'll talk to you soon До свидания. goodbye By the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union.